my listening area, Lake Oconee, Lake Sinclair, 33% of my audience is considered underserved uh, in getting even access to rural broadband. During our conversation, you said state and local levels should be looking at private contracts. Can you go a little bit more into that? Because at the moment in my listening area, you have a third of my doesn't have access or only has maybe one provider. I mean, for example, should should broadband be considered a utility? I just want to go more into what are the solutions for rural broadband for rural Georgia? Well, it's definitely not a function of the federal government. The federal government has almost zero uh, deny or zero power to to do anything in terms of state in infrastructure. This is really a look at Georgia, and that's that's not uh, you know what what we should be looking at right now. We've got wars in every nation. We have in 120 nation. We're in 120 nations around the world with our military. We have a collapsing economy right now. We're 26, 27 trillion dollars in debt. Uh, we have no money for that. We're absolutely broke right now, and we've got an empire of bureaucracy that is absolutely taken the middleman and stuck him in between the taxpayer and the, the, the utilities to begin with. You could probably start with less surveillance on the roadways and put that fiber optic to work getting out to those areas if you really wanted to solve something instead of surveilling innocent men and, men and women Ten traveling seconds. on Georgia highways. Um, this, is, this is absolutely a state and local issue. This is not a federal issue whatsoever. Thank you very much. Tom, please ask a question to John Ossoff. Mr. Ossoff, you said recently that you don't support packing the Supreme Court, but I don't believe that you have uh, said yet whether you would support the constitutional amendment introduced by Senator Perdue that would limit the court to no more than nine justices. Is that amendment a good idea? Why or why not? Well, I think judicial reform is a prerogative of Congress. And what I don't support is adding a seat to the Supreme Court because we don't like the policy positions of a justice who's been confirmed. But let's remember that four years ago, Senator Perdue was adamant. He gave impassioned floor speeches on the floor of the Senate that no confirmation of a Supreme Court justice should proceed in a presidential election year. Now he's thrown those so-called principles aside, and here's why. The Supreme Court will hear oral arguments on the repeal of the Affordable Care Act and its protections for Georgians with pre-existing conditions just days after this election. And Senator Perdue, working for the insurance industry, wants to rush through a Supreme Court confirmation to repeal the Affordable Care Act and let insurance companies again deny coverage to Georgians with pre-existing conditions like asthma, diabetes, and heart disease. 10 seconds. All right. I'd like to respond, please. Yes, absolutely. Senator Perdue, 10, 30 seconds. This is another seconds. example where John Ossoff will say anything to hide his radical socialist agenda. He will be nothing but a rubber stamp when Chuck Schumer wants to pack that court. Trust me on that. But the situation in 2016 he mentioned is totally different than it is today. We had a different party in the White House than we did in the Senate than we do today. Today we have both parties in the same uh, in the White House and the Senate of the same party. Even Justice Ginsburg said when 10? that happens that, uh, of course, you should go ahead and confirm. All right. Thank you very much. Emma, you get the final question in this round, and that is to Senator Perdue. Senator Perdue, during the Trump administration, you've closely aligned yourself with the president. And according to a recent Atlanta Journal-Constitution poll, 50% of Georgia voters disapprove of the job that the president is doing. You will need some of those voters to win this election. What is your message to them? Well, first of all, in six years, I've traveled all over this state from Hay Howard to Hiawassee and listened to people and their troubles <clears throat> and how they're trying to deal with a federal government that's been bloated out of size. Even in the pandemic here, we've reached out to over a million Georgians and listened to and tried to help them get through this crisis. What I talk about is this, results. After eight years of the lowest economic output in U.S. history, we turn this around and have now going on pre-COVID, the greatest economic turnaround in U.S. history, seven and a half million new jobs. We have uh, the highest middle class income ever measured, the lowest unemployment in 50 years, the lowest African-American, Asian, Hispanic unemployment ever measured. And most of all, after 55 years, Emma, of failure in the Democratic Party's great war on poverty from the great society, where they did not move the poverty rate at all, 
In the last three and a half years, pre-COVID, six and a half million people pulled themselves out of poverty. Ten seconds, sir. That contrast with under the Obama-Biden administration exercise plan, 800,000 people fell into poverty. And that's what they want to go back to. More regulations, more taxes. And that's Thank what you I'm very much. Thank you, sir. That concludes the first portion of the debate. The candidates will now ask a question to each of their opponents. Candidates will have 15 seconds to ask the question, 60 seconds to respond, and 30 seconds for a rebuttal. And Shane Hazel, you have the first question to John Ossoff. Absolutely. John, you've, uh, you've come out in support of Biden and Kamala Harris. Biden was the author of the 94 crime bill that put forth uh, qualified immunity, increased the drug war, police militarization, civil asset forfeiture, no-knock raids. Um, and Kamala Harris, the top cop out of California, has locked more black men in cages than anybody in any other state in history. How is it that you can support these two and then also uh, say you support BLM? Well, thank you for the question, Mr. Hazel. And I learned about public service at the feet of my mentor, Congressman John Lewis, who spent his entire life and his entire career fighting for civil rights and voting rights. And that's why I will be a champion for criminal justice reform in the United States Senate. We have to recognize that racial profiling and brutality, these are not isolated incidents, as Senator Perdue insists. This is a systemic problem in our criminal justice system. It's why we need a new Civil Rights Act. It's why we need national standards for the use of force. It's why we need a new Voting Rights Act to end racial profiling and racism in criminal justice. When a young black man, Ahmaud Arbery, is shot to death in the street in broad daylight here in Georgia, and local police and prosecutors look the other way, that makes a mockery of the 14th Amendment equal protection guarantees of the US Constitution. And that's why Ten we seconds. need strength in civil rights laws. Senator Perdue won't get this done. He didn't even show up when he was invited to address the NAACP about how we can reform this system. Thank you very much. David Perdue, it is your turn to ask a question to Shane like Hazel. To that. I have a I sure 30 seconds for that. a rebuttal first. But I thought Shane also got to rebut that for 30 seconds. Shane, would you like to rebut that? I, I don't think uh, Mr. Ossoff answered the question. I think what we have is a, uh, a an expediency move. I think what we're doing is playing party politics once again. When, in of course, instead of supporting Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, there is a a presidential nominee out of the Libertarian Party that is actually fighting for the end of qualified immunity, the drug war, the police militarization, civil asset forfeiture, and no-knock raids. That is who Ten seconds. If we were being honest and consistent, who we would be supporting, John. All right. And now Senator I would Perdue? like to rebut, Donna. Thank you very much. You got a tough job tonight, Donna. Um, <laughs> you know, John Offsaw, this is what I'm talking about. This is all talk. The 94 law that Shane mentioned, and I agree 100 percent with him, that law was written by Joe Biden, and it locked up more black men in this country than any law in the last 25 years. What we did in the last two years is pass criminal justice reform that freed 3,000 African-American young men who were low-level, nonviolent drug offenders Ten seconds. who got caught up in minimum sentencing. They had 26 years, the Democrats did, to do something about criminal justice reform, and they did zero. Thank you very much. Now, Senator Perdue, it is your turn to ask a question to Shane Hazel. Well, first of all, Shane, I want to thank you for your military service, and, and I mean that from my heart. Um, we just heard that John Ossoff hypocritically attacked the Paycheck Protection Program. Um, if you had been in the Senate, would you have supported the Paycheck Protection Program? No, and as libertarians, we we don't believe in going outside of the constitutional boundaries. The constitutional boundaries are very strict. They're very specific. And Article 1, Section 8 lays out most of our powers. Our powers are for war, peace, negotiation, and foreign commerce. We are supposed to be an external-looking uh, part of our government without any real influence on the day-to-day -day lives here in Georgia. And so what I would have done is made sure that our governor, Governor Kemp, understood that he does not have the right to block us from assembly. He does not have the right through force and coercion through police and sheriffs to make sure that we are in assembly. I think what we should have done is said, evaluate the risk on your own and go out there and do what you need to do to make your family essentially have food and clothing and, and leave everybody alone. That's good Ten ideas. Seconds. 
we don't think good, or, you know, good ideas don't require force. And that is how we protect liberty and our rights here in America. Thank you for the question. All right. Thank you very much. John Ossoff, please ask sorry, your question. I'm sorry. Hey, Donna, I think right. I get a response. Senator to that Perdue? Question. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. 30 seconds. Well, first of all, Shane, I, I, I agree 100% with the concept of limited government. I do think in this situation, though, it was an unprecedented pandemic that required help for people to survive the pandemic. We brought $47 billion to the state of Georgia to try to help our hospitals, our schools, our communities, and our small businesses. We did the PPP program that saved a million and a half jobs in this state. Ten. Thank you. I'd like Thank to you very much. That very quickly, if I might. All right, go ahead. The, although your heart is in the right place, Senator, the the powers are very specific, and if we allow one person to do this, we allow everybody to do this here going forward in precedent. What we should have done is left people to their own lives and their own liberties, um, and and. And, and really uh, not shut down the economy, which has cost over a million jobs here. 10 seconds. Georgia. All right. Thank you very much. You very much. John Ossoff, please ask your question for Senator Perdue. Senator, 220,000 parents, grandparents, friends, and neighbors have been killed by a virus that you insisted was no more deadly than the ordinary flu. When you told us the risk was low, you and Donald Trump both downplayed the threat of this crisis. Do you believe that President Trump has done everything in his power to keep the people of Georgia safe and healthy during this pandemic? Well, John, thank you for the question. I've, I've been totally focused on the needs of Georgians since this uh, crisis broke out. And the quote that you're giving there is totally misleading. So what I'm telling the, vote, the viewers tonight is you left off the back part of that where we also said that you need to take this very seriously, and we did. We created a relief package that brought $47 billion to the state, including a PPP program that you opposed that saved a million and a half jobs in Georgia. You would have denied those million and a half people their jobs. That's what I'm fighting for. In the meantime, all you would do if you'd been in the Senate would have been a rubber stamp for Chuck Schumer, who is locking the country down. He will not negotiate now for a second phase of this thing that these small businesses really need. These are 140,000 small businesses in the state of Georgia. If they don't get some help in the very near future, all the rest that we've done for them may, may go for naught. It just seems to me that Ten you hide your radical socialist agenda. Rebuttal, Mr. Ossoff. Senator Perdue, look up from your notes and answer the question. Do you believe President Trump has done everything in his power to protect the people of Georgia during this pandemic? I absolutely do, John, and I'll tell you this. Had the Democrats been involved, we'd have anarchy like we have in Portland and Chicago and California. You guys are trying to divide the country right now when we're in a moment of crisis. What we have right now is a way forward. We did, uh, we're doing everything we can to break through the regulations that would bring a vaccine quicker. You guys had all the regulations under Obama and Biden cause us over two years to seconds. develop these vaccines. In the meantime, we've broken through that and are going to deliver one much earlier than that. And you see these treatment regimens, regimens coming. That would have never happened under different Thank you very much. Controlled Senate. John Ossoff. Senator, the President of the United States stood in the White House briefing room and suggested people inject chemical disinfectants. You told us this disease was no more deadly than the flu. You're changing the subject left, right, and center. You seriously believe President Trump has done everything in his power to protect us, or have you been too busy fending off multiple federal investigations for insider trading Ten to seconds. do your own job? Senator Perdue. I get to respond. But first of all, you can talk about that all night, but it's already been refuted. And the other thing, John, is it's so easy to be a Monday morning quarterback. First of all, you misquote me, you misquote the president, and what you said is just not true. This is what I'm saying. You will say anything to divert the people away from the truth about how radical your socialist agenda really is. Thank you very much. We need to move on. So now it is time for Shane Hazel. Please ask your question of Senator Perdue. Senator Perdue, the 116th Congress has not fared too well in constitutional voting. Your score to date from the 116th Congress for constitutional votes from per the Freedom Index is 25%. What differentiates you from John Ossoff? 
Well, first of all, I'm a free enterprise. I believe in the free enterprise system. I believe in economic opportunity for everybody and individual liberty. What John Ossoff believes is pretty obvious. He wants state control. He wants this to be a socialist state. The extreme left of the Democratic Party has taken over control. And if elected, John <coughs> Ossoff would be a rubber stamp for that radical left movement within the Democratic Party. I believe that this is the greatest country in the history of the world. I love America. The Democrats, including my opponent, John Ossoff, talk negatively about it. At the one hand, they tell people, oh, well, I want to support the police. They walk into another crowd and he says, oh, no, I believe in defunding the police. He is backed by a billionaire, Michael Blumberg. And when he goes out in the state, he says, of course, I'm going to support the Second Amendment. But when he's in Atlanta, he says something different, totally. He also talks about never taking any corporate money. He's on TV right now talking about never taking corporate money. Ten seconds. When it's already been documented by a respected newspaper that he's already taking tens of thousands of dollars. He is radical, and he is trying to hide this radical socialist agenda. Thank you, Mr. Ossoff. Debating Senator Perdue, it's like being on cable news. It's like being on Twitter. Senator come out to the real world where people are suffering. This isn't about Democrats versus Republicans and liberals versus conservatives. This is about the people of the United States against crooks like you in Washington, too busy enriching yourself while you're in office to protect us from the most significant threat to our health and our prosperity yeah. in generations, a threat you systematically downplayed and denied and have failed to address responsibly or effectively. I need to respond to that. Senator that Perdue. He can say it all night long. It's already been refuted, and the more he says it, the more he confirms exactly what I've been saying. He'll say anything to hide his radical socialist agenda. All right. Senator Perdue, it is your turn to ask a question to John Ossoff. I'd be happy to, Donna. Thank you. John, you support defunding the police. Your billionaire buddies who are, who are backing your uh, campaign, 75% of your money is coming from outside the state want you to defund the police. The federal order, uh, fraternal order of police and 95 sheriffs, including 12 sheriffs from your own party in our state, have endorsed me and not you. Why is that? Senator, I don't support defunding the police, and that's why every time the newspapers report on your allegations, they have to call you false. You're lying about my record because you don't want to address your own. You have done nothing, nothing to address the demands of millions of people, a multiracial, multi-generational coalition that is peacefully demanding criminal justice reform and the reform of policing in this country. I was out marching peacefully with the NAACP late spring after Ahmaud Arbery was killed, and Bishop Jackson of the AME Church said that they had invited you to come and address the people and describe how we could heal these wounds and rebuild trust between communities and law enforcement. And not only didn't you show up, you didn't even respond to the invitation, Senator. So instead of trying to politicize this and turn the need for reform of policing and reform of criminal justice into a political wedge, why don't you put forward a proposal that will actually help rebuild trust between communities and law enforcement? Senator Perdue? We not only put a proposal, we actually passed a law, John. We actually did something about criminal justice reform, something you could have done for 26 years, your party, and they did not do a thing. Your billionaire buddies want you to defund the police. You've been in rallies where the signs and everything around you are abolish the police. You've said people you're going to beat them down to where they can't raise their head in public, preaching fear. And so what I'm talking about here is that these sheriffs know you will not have their back. These fraternal order of policemen know that you will not have their back. That's why they're endorsing me. All right, we're going to move on. John Ossoff, it is your turn for the final question in this segment for Shane Hazel. Mr. Hazel, grateful to your presence here, grateful for your presence in the race and for your consistent principles. You know, Senator Perdue several years ago expressed that he thought that the Department of Education should be abolished. He's expressed his support for abolishing the Environmental Protection Agency. I don't know if he still holds those views. But what are your thoughts based in your libertarian principles on those agencies and the roles that they play in our government and our society? Well, thank you, John. It's uh, about the first time I've heard you mention my name ever, uh, you or the senator in that case, which I think was uh, an act of suppression. Um, in terms of the Department of Education and the EPA and a whole bunch of the other alphabet soup that isn't constitutionally merited or delegated to the federal government, those 
uh, powers belong to the states for the 10th Amendment. And what we see now in terms of government uh, education or government indoctrination, I think, has led us to the path where we are now. Nobody understands their rights. Nobody is a constitutional expert. Nobody is going out there and defending what the Constitution is. You will probably have something like a 15 percent constitutional voting record. Senator David Perdue has a 25 percent in the 116th Congress. There is only one senator in all of the United States that has an A average, and that is Rand Paul. I am a heck of a lot more like Rand Paul than anybody else out there to decentralize these powers to the states and let people reach out and touch their local representatives. That is how we get better results and get the government out. Right now, we have more government than we have ever had in history. We don't need any more of it. We need. Thank you, Mr. Hazel. John Ossoff, your rebuttal. Well, Mr. Hazel, I appreciate your response. I appreciate the consistency of your principles, though I disagree with you on policy. Senator Perdue in the past has expressed his support for abolition of the Department of Education, which runs the Pell Grant program for college affordability. He's expressed his support for abolition of the Environmental Protection Agency, which protects our clean air and clean water. And I doubt that he approaches those issues with the same consistency that you do, Shane. Ten seconds. Thank you very much. Mr. Perdue? Respond? Yes. Yes, you may. Again, my mom and dad were school teachers, and they believe, and I do too, that the best decision is made between the parents, the school teacher, the administrators of the local community. It just seems to me that you have to look at results. The Department of Education, in my mind, has been an unmitigated disaster since it was created in 1976 by Jimmy Carter. Prior to that time, our 14-year-olds led the world in math, science, and reading. Today, we are way down the list. And so it seems to me we need to hold it accountable, just like we should the post office and other departments up there. All right. Mr. Ossoff? So, Senator Perdue, do you oh, still sorry, support abolishing the Department him, of I Education? Didn't, I didn't mention his name, Donna. I'm sorry. Do you still support did, abolishing the Department of Education? Donna, Will you answer I the question? Right. His name. It's a simple Mr. question. Perdue, I'm go sorry. Ahead. He get Senator to ask Perdue, that question. go ahead. I'm done. All righty. So, no answer. All right. Then we're going to move on. We're going to move on. And that I'm will conclude it, our. You're not listening. That will conclude our second round. For those just joining us, this is the debate between candidates for U.S. Senate. We will now go on back to the panel to ask questions until we run out of time. I will determine when a rebuttal is appropriate, but candidates may raise their hand if they feel they should get a rebuttal. Rahul Bali, you get the first question in this round. Senator Perdue, I want to go back to the first round and and ask my question on education again. Specifically, should the Trump administration or Congress waive federal requirements for standardized testing and allow states to make those decisions? Well, personally, Ro, with with everything else we've done in terms of waiving uh, certain requirements of regulatory uh, oversight, I personally would support that until we get out of this crisis. I think the schools are under great pressure. Uh, Some are virtual, some are in person, some are combinations, and it puts a lot of pressure on these teachers and school uh, school administrators. So uh, that's my answer to the question. I think it's a reasonable thing to consider. Uh, I know I'm in disagreement maybe with the secretary, but this one makes sense to me as a child of two teachers. All right, thank you very much. Tom Baxter, it is your turn. Senator Perdue, the constitutional amendment that we were talking about a minute ago with Mr. Ossoff, uh, the one that you uh, co-sponsored, says that the U.S. Supreme Court uh, should consist of no more than nine members. It says nothing about whether or for how long the court might operate with less than nine members, and you can affect the balance of the court by reducing its size just as easily as you can by increasing it. Should the amendment have some provision for filling open seats uh, expeditiously to avoid situations like that after the death of Justice Scalia? Well, I I would support that, but I think the primary uh, notion here is that this is, again, obstruction. You see uh, the Democrats in Washington saying now different things than they said in 16. I just want to make sure this is very clear. The situation now where you have the same party in the White House, the same party in the Senate, is different than we had in 2016 where you had But you would agree that you would agree that the constitutional amendment should include some provision for not dragging out a, a confirmation? I think so, and I think what happens here, though, is to follow a historic legacy, and that is that I, I heard your question is it would uh, require it not to be any less than nine for some period of time. So my point is this, is that if you look at the historical legacy, 
19 times in our history you've had this situation and only 17 or in 17 of those uh, instances they were confirmed even justice ginsburg said in a situation like this you should of course go ahead and confirm in that year all right thank you very much emma hurt please ask a question and donna this question is for all the candidates hopefully in alphabetical order mr hazel Ms. ossoff and senator purdue so the question is, on the Georgia coast, sea levels have already gone up by 10 inches in the last 80 years and will continue rising as the ice caps melt and the oceans get warmer. Mr. Ossoff and Senator Purdue, you both have said you oppose the Green New Deal. Mr. Hazel, you are opposed to government funding of renewable energy and greenhouse gas regulations. So what do you propose to do to address sea level rise and, cl and climate change? You leave it to the states. You leave it to the conservationists. You leave it to the guides. You leave it to the outdoorsmen and women that understand their local environments and their habitats. They know more about local populations for fish and wildlife out there than anybody else. Those people can, can reach out and touch their city council, their county commissioners, their sheriffs, and people like that, and they can come up with better practices for those areas than bureaucrats in D.C., especially when we're talking about going into things like the Paris Accords, where we are going to be strapped with more and more debt. We are going to have to live up to regulations while China and India and the rest of the world does not. In First and foremost, you can downsize the government. The government is absolutely the largest polluter in the United States. You scale back the EPA, you scale back the DOD, you scale back a whole seconds. bunch of the alphabet soup, and now you've got a cleaner world almost automatically. Thank you. Mr. Ossoff? Well, Georgia's farmers and fishermen are already feeling the effects of climate change, as are our coastal communities, which will continue to see more high storm surge events, more high wind events. We can unite this country right now at a moment when so many are out of work and struggling economically behind a historic infrastructure plan with unprecedented investments in clean energy to make Georgia the leading producer of renewable energy in the American Southeast, to invest in public health clinics, research and development, rural broadband, transit and transportation. We can unite people behind an infrastructure program. Senator Perdue has been in the Senate for six years, in the Senate majority, no major infrastructure plan because this is a man without vision. This is a man who lacks vision beyond the interests of his donors. Senator, you don't even accept the scientific consensus that greenhouse gas pollution is driving climate change, do you? Yeah. Rebuttal, Senator Perdue. Thank you. <clears throat> Let's talk about infrastructure. Democrats for 20 years tried to deepen this port, some Republicans as well, but career politicians failed to deepen the port of Savannah over 20 years. As a business guy, I went to Washington to get results for the people of Georgia, and we did that. That's the highest economic return of any infrastructure investment that we had available to us in the United States, and we got it done. It'll be completed by the end of next year. The next thing Ten is seconds I grew up on, on a rebuttal. farm. And I can tell you that nobody understands better than farmers do about how to take care of air, land, and the water. Um, it's not big bureaucracy that's going to solve this. And you can talk about infrastructure all you want to. Talk to us about how we're going to finance you. that because Thank none you very of what much. you've done as Democrats have ever worked. So, uh, Senator Perdue, you, you may now answer the question that Emma asked about climate change. Well, first of all, Emma, thank you for the question. I think we can all agree the climate is changing. And as I said, I grew up on a farm, working on a farm, and you know my my ancestors and my relatives all know because they want to hand it down to the next generation. Listen, what we've got to do is different from what the Democrats are talking about. They're talking about the Green New Deal, and no matter what John Ossoff says, in one crowd he says, "Oh no, I don't support it." In another one, he does. He wants to do away with all oil and gas production as soon as possible. He talks about renewals, but he never talks about base load. You have to have a base load, and right now we don't have that in terms of power generation. They would cost millions of jobs. The Green New Deal costs $9 trillion per year. There, that is the greatest threat to Medicare and Social Security that we have in America today is this outrageous spending plan the Democrats are trying to perpetrate in this election. Thank you very much. Raul, it's your turn to ask a question. And I actually want to follow up on, on this conversation. Uh, Mr. Ossoff, when you and I talked about your infrastructure plan, I asked you, how are you going to pay for it? And your answer was the United States Treasury. I'm looking for specifics. Is that going to be through raising taxes, raising fees like on cell phones for rural broadband, specific cuts to the federal uh, budget, or 
taking on more debt for, for uh, more national debt, which is looking for how are you going to pay for that plan? Well, first of all, we should be cutting taxes for working families and small businesses. We should be cutting taxes for working families and small businesses. And as for how we finance an ambitious infrastructure agenda, look, when it comes time to embark upon wars of choice based often on false pretenses, when it comes time to shovel trillions of dollars at investment banks on Wall Street to bail them out, when Senator Perdue and Mitch McConnell want to spend trillions of dollars on giveaways for their political donors, Senator Perdue never asked where we're going to find those resources. It's when it comes time to invest in our infrastructure that Senator Perdue suddenly pleads that the country is bankrupt. Remember that Senator Perdue went into the Senate six years ago saying that getting the federal debt under control was his top priority. Even before COVID, $5 trillion of growth in the federal Ten debt. Seconds. But it hasn't gone to investments in infrastructure. It hasn't gone to investments in small businesses and working people. A huge amount of it has gone to giveaways to Senator Perdue's donors who pay him for lavish Thank retreats you very much. on his private island. Rebuttal, so, Senator I'm, Perdue? Yes, I get, I get to rebut that. Thank you. Well, first of all, he still has answered answer to the question how he's going to pay for it. And for him to tell the people in Georgia that he believes in cutting taxes is a joke. No Democrat has ever said that. And I'm telling you that right now, Joe Biden is going to drive taxes up. If you don't believe it, listen to what he just said last week. And John Ossoff will be a rubber stamp for that policy. Look, I believe in public-private partnerships. We've already proven that around the world. That can absolutely build infrastructure. But this idea, Ten seconds. just like under President Obama, where he went forward with uh, a great trillion-dollar infrastructure package that gave us no economic return. They don't understand. All right. For John Ossoff to talk about creating jobs is a joke. Thank you very He's much. created one American job. Thank you very much, Senator. Rebuttal, John Ossoff. Well, while we're on the subject of infrastructure and climate change, Senator, just like you haven't answered the question whether you still support abolishing the Department of Education, and we know you're not going to answer the question because you're afraid to answer the question, you haven't answered the question whether you accept the scientific consensus that human greenhouse gas pollution is driving climate change. I need to rebut that, please. Thank you. Yes, quickly. Talk, we're going to move we're talking on. About unanswered, while we're talking about unanswered questions, you've never come clean on Al Jazeera or the Chinese Communist government, even though people have talked about that. You still say you don't take corporate money, even though there's a documented press article about that. So um, when you start talking about economic matters and creating jobs, it's really an irony since you've never created one American job. This is the swamp, folks. This is the swamp. He won't answer the question, always deflecting, always pivoting. Do you support abolishing the Department of Education? Do you accept the scientific consensus on climate change? Senator, don't the refer to your notes. Is, look into the camera the and tell us. The question is, did he take corporate money? He has not answered that. John, will you answer that to the people of Georgia right now? My well, campaign no. has you not accepted the a single have to contribution move on, from a corporate tax We're going to have to You're move on. to answer very direct questions. We're going to have to move on. Tom Baxter, you have a question. This is a question I'd like to ask all three candidates, and this time let's start with Mr. Ossoff uh, and then go to Senator Perdue and, and then to uh, Mr. Hazel. Many of those who have warned that a global pandemic was coming now believe that this won't be the last one. What can this country do to ensure that our reaction to the next pandemic, if it comes, won't become politicized and uncoordinated. And please try to answer without too much casting blame or taking credit for the current pandemic. Who's that for first time? Is that for That's me? That's for you. Yes, yeah. Mr. Ossoff first. Sure. Look, my wife, Alicia, is an OBGYN doctor here in Atlanta. And she and all of the heroic healthcare workers have put themselves at risk to keep people healthy during this crisis. She has held the hands of mothers with COVID-19 delivering babies who cannot be surrounded by loved ones. The healthcare workers have done their jobs. It's politicians like Senator Perdue who have not, and everybody knows it. The answer to your question, Tom, is to empower and trust medical experts. Senator Perdue, who voted to cut a billion dollars from Georgia's own Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, who compared COVID-19 to the flu, who enabled this president in a pandemic response that everybody from all parties known has been a disaster. Nearly a quarter of a million Americans have died. We need government that is honest and competent and that empowers public health experts in a public health emergency. 10 seconds. 
All right, Senator Perdue. Uh, th thank you. It just seems to me that, uh, again, idle chatter here. You know, what we really did is we, we brought help to the people of Georgia, both in the hospitals, schools, communities, and in the workplace. While John Ossoff opposed the PPP, his own father took out a PPP loan. It saved a million and a half jobs in Georgia. But he won't answer, answer that uh, honestly to the people of Georgia, why he opposed the PPP loan. What we've got to do now is build up our strategic reserves, develop a quicker way to develop vaccines. And by the way, we had to knock out a lot of democratically originated uh, regulations in order to begin to do that. There's no way that we're going to be able to stand up to the next virus, however, if we don't get our financial house in order. As Shane just said, we dumped a, a couple of trillion dollars, $2.9 trillion on this in the CARES package. We may not have the right to do that later. Rebuttal, John Ossoff. Senator, I'm astounded. It is not idle chatter, Senator. It's 220,000 Americans killed by a virus. No, but your solution you told us is was, absolutely excuse me, idle Senator. Chatter. Excuse idle me, chatter. Senator. Your solution, 220,000. Not one Donna, solution. I'll wait for my time to be restored. Are you done, Senator? No, not by a long shot. Like 220,000 Americans have been killed. And listen to you, schoolyard insults, not a shred of empathy, not a shred of personal responsibility that a virus you told us posed low risk to our health, that a virus you compared to the ordinary flu, that if administration response that was obviously totally incompetent, which you enabled and praised, has compounded the human right. tragedy and the economic damage. You should be ashamed Ten of yourself, seconds. sir. No, and who should be ashamed and of yourself, John, is this, is that you took money from the Chinese government that originated this virus in the first place. Senator we go Perdue, again, we're so critical of Gentlemen, we're, we're going to have to give government for their culpability. That's we're going to have to give folks. Shane Hazel a chance to answer this question. Shane. Thank you very much. Ladies and gents, if you're sick of this kind of stuff and you want principled consistency on the, the policy here in the United States and overseas, this is you're not going to get it with these type of politicians. Both have spent about $40 million in terms of getting their voices out to you. Ladies and gents, this is about you. This is about the American people. This is about freedom and liberty. This is not about a one-size-fits-all government solution. This is about empowering you. And as a Marine combat vet who went through nuclear biological chemical training, I can tell you to see politicians making gross accusations, flip-flopping day in and day out about what is going on in the current political environment is absolutely gross and neglectful of the American people and their lives. Ten the seconds. less government we have in your life, the better decisions that you can make without force and coercion. We're going to move on. And now, Emma Hurt, your question. Senator Perdue, Mr. Ossoff has criticized you for not holding an open public town hall while in office. I understand you hold constituent conference calls multiple times per week. I'm asking specifically about the open town hall format. Why haven't you held it? Well, first of all, Emma, that's not quite true. That's a, a lie that the Democrats have perpetrated for six years because they only want to create something they can come in and disrupt. So what we've done is we've taken care of the people who have legitimate questions. We've been meeting them. I've talked to everybody or people from all 159 counties. And just in this pandemic, we've reached out to over a million people and helped them, tried to reach out and help them through this. John talks about empathy. I've lost some very close friends in this. It's outrageous to say that this is not personal to me. And, but what we've got to do now is move forward. We've got to beat this virus. We've got to get ready for the next one. And we've got to get our economy back. Who do you trust more to get the economy back? Somebody that's actually created tens of thousands of jobs? or somebody that just talks this idle chatter about the Democratic mantra. All right, thank you very much. We're gonna go now to Rahul, your, your question. Senator Perdue, I, I wanted to talk about something else that we talked about in a recent conversation, and that is the focus on mandatory federal expenses like Social Security, Medicare. I wanna focus on Social Security. I'm looking for specifics. Would you raise the Social Security tax coming out of paychecks? Would you raise the age someone gets full Social Security benefits? Again, I'm looking for specifics on how you you said this is going to be something you want to focus on in the second term. What would you do specifically with Social Security? Well, first of all, I would absolutely protect Social Security and Medicare beneficiaries. 
But I'll tell you the greatest threat to him, and I'll get to the answer in a minute. I have not said anything about John Ossoff yet because he can put his finger down. But I'll tell you the greatest threat to it is all the Democratic spending that they want to do puts Medicare and Social Security in great jeopardy. Right now, I believe that you can solve Social Security by working on several different things, but you've got to protect the beneficiaries and make sure that nothing happens to that. You've got to grow the economy. You've got to keep career politicians from raiding the trust fund. And in the meantime, what they want to do is basically just uh, more talk, more entitlement. And, and, and so there's no real solution coming out. The Democratic spending that they're talking about between socialized medicine and Green New Deal would definitely in jeopard, it would jeopardize Medicare beneficiaries and Social Security beneficiaries. But where would your, where, where would your focus be in getting more money into Social Security or, or curtailing the benefits? I'm asking specifically, where's your focus going to be on that? Is that something you want to work on? As a business guy, you work on revenue and expenses, and you situ see a situation like this. Career politicians have buried their heads since 1983 on this, both Democrats and Republicans. It's time to get serious about this, and I believe in a second term of a President Trump, I believe we can get to that. But I think you have to have compromise in here. I believe that you have to work on uh, means testing potentially. I think you have to work on uh, the revenue side of this thing. But the first thing All you've right. got to make sure of is to protect the beneficiaries, to protect and save Social Security and Medicare. All right. Gentlemen, that is all the time we have for questions. Each candidate will now have 60 seconds for a closing statement. Senator Perdue, you get the first closing statement. Well, thank you, Donna. Uh, I think the viewers can see tonight that um, what I was saying is exactly right. John Ossoff is desperate. He'll say anything to hide his radical socialist agenda. He wants the Green New Deal. He wants to defund the police. He wants to close military bases in Georgia. He wants to force socialized medicine on us. In my 40-year business career, I learned how to create tens of thousands of jobs, and I took that to Washington to make a difference and get results for Georgia. We created the greatest economic turnaround in U.S. history after eight years of total disaster under Barack Obama and Joe Biden. We are building our military back. We are creating, we are uh, com confirming judges that will apply law, not make law. We have now achieved energy uh, 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 independence. And so right now, I think the choice is very clear. It just seems to me that we, if you stand together, if we stand together, we can solve and beat this Ten debt seconds. crisis. We can absolutely get our economy back. And we can assure the American dream is a reality for every child in America going forward. God bless you and thank you. Thank you. John Ossoff, it is your turn. Thank you, Donna, and thank you to our hosts. My mother came to this country as an immigrant when she was 23 years old because she believed in America. That doesn't mean she indulged some fantasy about our history or that you didn't know how much further we had to go, but she believed and admired in e pluribus unum, out of many one. She admired that our founding documents enshrined the principles of universal human rights. And she became a citizen because she knew that our democracy is how we move this country forward. But what's happened in these last four years has broken my mother's heart, like it's broken so many hearts. We are more divided than at any time in modern American history. We have a president who is obviously not up to the job and who works every day to divide us further. A quarter of a million Americans will soon have died from a virus that our own government, President Trump and Senator Perdue, lied to us and told us posed low risk to our health. Our health care is on the line. This is a matter of life and death. It's time to vote and make a change in this country. Thank you. Shane Hazel, you get the final closing statement. Well, thank you. And thank you, everybody, for having me paying attention to being involved in this process. If you're tired of what you're seeing here between politicians, you've got a choice. And with Georgia voting laws, with 50 plus one, you get a do-over if there's a runoff. My mission is to bring the people together while preserving the freedom of every individual, regardless of skin color, age, faith, gender, love, and every other nuance which makes us unique. We come together and we remove the government corporate cabals from our lives of peaceful people here in the US and around the world. I believe in peace through liberty. I believe it is time to end the wars, including the drug war. I believe it is time to restore sound money and end the Federal Reserve. And I believe it is time to end the empire, which is the bureaucratic nightmare, which we all face in our daily lives from the time we get out of our federally approved mattress to the time we get back into it at the very end of the day. I'm Shane Hazel, and I hope to earn your vote. 
Thank you. That concludes our debate. We'd like to remind voters that election day is Tuesday, November 3rd. Don't forget to turn in your absentee ballot if you requested one. And early voting in person began today and will run through October 30th. Thanks to the candidates and thanks to the members of our panel for participating. Raul Bali, Emma Hurt, and Tom Baxter. I would also like to thank the Atlanta Press Club and Georgia Public Broadcasting for arranging today's debate. For more information on the full schedule of debates, please visit atlantapressclub.org. This debate will be available for viewers to watch on demand on Atlanta Press Club's Facebook page and on Georgia Public Broadcasting's website, gpb.org. I'm Donna Lowry. Thank you for joining us for the Atlanta Press Club. Loudermilk Young Debate Series.